Okay, we're here with another one of our fabulous YDA interviews, and this time I'm privileged to be joined by Jakub Jurasek, who uh, won a gold for his film Don't Be a Pussy, uh, which is a brilliant, a brilliant short film. Um, we've only got 15 minutes to chat, and there are so many questions I want to ask about this, so I want to crack on as, as fast as possible. Um, thanks so much for joining me, Jakub. Hi, thank you. How, how are you doing today? How, whereabouts are you based? You're very, it's very woody where you are, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, normally I'm based in Prague, but uh, right now I'm in the countryside in the Czech Republic at my grand, uh, uh, grandparents' cottage. Ah, it looks really nice, very, very sort of relaxing and chilled. There's a, so it's certainly, uh, certainly a little bit calmer than my background right now. Anyway, speaking of backgrounds, one of the first things I wanted to speak to you about, we're going to chat about the film in a sec. But um, I kind of wanted to know about how you got into filmmaking. What was it that drew you to, to telling stories through film? Well, originally I, um, um, I started as a musician. I played in, in bands uh, since I was uh, 13. And then uh, at the end of high school, I, I actually wanted to be an architect. So I wanted to study architecture. But then at the very end of high school, two of my classmates applied for, um, for this film school, uh, FAMU in Prague, and they wanted to be uh, film directors. And I thought um, if they can <laughs> try that, <laughs> uh, why, why couldn't I try that too? So uh, yeah, so I applied and I got into the film school and that's how I started making movies. And how long, how long is that course? Is it, uh, I'm guessing that's a practical course, is it? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, normally it's uh, three years of bachelor and two years of master's, but I'm already at the end of my seventh year and I'm starting my <laughs> eighth year <laughs> right now. So <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, it, who needs to leave? Who needs to leave school? <laughs> the, the, life is a learning process, isn't it? Well, speaking of school, obviously that's a lovely segue into uh, your film, which is based primarily in a school, slightly, slightly younger cast than, um, than I'm sure your filmmaking friends. So can you tell us a little bit about the origins of, of Don't Be A Pussy and yeah, where, where, the, where the idea for that film came from and how you got involved? Yeah, so... Um... At the, yeah, that's a, it, it was a, my first movie during my master's degree and um, I was, um, I just wanted to shoot a comedy with kids. It was my goal. <laughs> <laughs> and then I came across this uh, brilliant script that uh, Barbara wrote. And um, so she is the author of the idea of, of, the, of the plot. Uh, and I think if I can speak for her, uh, she started this idea because um, she um, she was teaching a, like an extracurricular class um, of dancing for kids. And then she saw this advertisement for this YouTubers class. <laughs> and <laughs> she started uh, just like wondering what this class was like and uh, why all the kids wanted to take the YouTubers class and not her dancing class anymore. <laughs> oh, it makes so sense. the origin of the, <laughs> of the idea. The frustrations of a dance teacher. I mean, that should be the subtitle for the thing. <laughs> um, well, you talk about wanting to make a comedy uh, with kids and yeah, the film is very comedic throughout. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of laughter to be had from the film, but it's also quite dark. I found it almost quite heartbreaking in a lot of ways the, the sort of the innocence of the characters being both sort of funny and 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 deeply sad um so how did you balance that when you came to work on it what, what was was that a conscious thing where you got like you didn't want to push it too far one way or the other yeah um i think i'm i'm a bit of a melancholic person but at the same time i like uh humor <laughs> <laughs> and uh that that's definitely reflected in the in the soundtrack that I chose for the movie, um, which builds uh, basically the whole atmosphere of the of the universe that we created. I think it's a um, yeah, it's a big part of it. And um, yeah, my main goal was to to just like 
dive into this world in the in the current world uh seen through the eyes of children and like explore a bit um, this young generation without blaming them for being i don't know obsessed with social media or um, stuff like that um because i think it's the world that the adults created for this generation so i wanted to um, tell the story through the eyes of the kids and being as much uh, on their side <laughs> as <Yeah>. i could <laughs> but at the same time um, yeah just like try to uh, speak a bit about the about the dark sides of uh, of social media <laughs> Yeah, and it certainly does. It's uh, it is it, like I say. So I found it a real sort of heartbreaking tale in in a lot of ways, um, and a lot of that comes through from the performance of the kids. And obviously, there's that old adage of "Don't work with children or animals." You pretty much work exclusively with children in this film. So, what <laughs> what what was you said earlier? You wanted to make a, a a sort of a comedy with kids. What was it a that attracted you to to work with um, with like a younger cast and also how did you draw those performances out of them? Because they're pretty, I mean, how old are the, the girls? 10, 9 or 10? Uh, yeah, they were 10 or 11 at the time. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's still very young to be that accomplished. I thought they were fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, the, the two main characters uh, already had some experience for from uh, shooting with other directors from like bigger sets than, than ours. <laughs> so they were actually like, pretty professional. Um, and uh, the rest of the, the rest of the cast is just um, kids, uh, I don't know, children from uh, of friends that we know or <laughs> of people that we know. And um, I don't know, it was very natural for me to work with them. Uh, I just tried to, um, talk to them as if they were mm, like my conversational partners not like I, I wasn't trying to um, talk to them like they were less than normal actors or you know uh, <laughs> and it, it, it was, it's, it's not it the, the film itself doesn't have necessarily an improvisational feel but there's certainly some very sort of natural moments in it so what did you sort of play with that whilst shooting was that was were they given a yeah, bit yeah, definitely. To work around it yeah definitely there's a lot of like improvisation but it's like it's not it's not like improvised uh situations but you know just i, I just told them to be natural in the situations that they know from school mm. stuff like that they definitely had the same reaction that I would to the concept of putting a spoonful of cinnamon in their mouth. So uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was a, a good moment. Um, so yeah, so you mentioned earlier the the soundtrack, obviously building on that atmosphere you were creating, and I felt that the film kind of has this sort of sense of dread throughout it. You don't really know how far the girls are going to take. I don't want to spoil it too much. Hopefully, everyone who's watching this has watched the film already, but. Um, you don't know how far the girl's going to take the, you know, the YouTubing. And also I was really worried for the sort of final scenes, especially as the teacher had previously said, I'll, I'll deal with this. I thought, Oh, she got like a gun <laughs> in her desk or something. So yeah, was that, was that, you said you wanted the soundtrack to convey this thing. Were you, how did you sort of balance the pace of the film to sort of give that feeling of dread or did, have I just interpreted it and you weren't intending that at all? Um, I was intending that, but I can't really mm, tell you how we <laughs> we did that. <laughs> it was well, just like okay. natural for us. <laughs> the the I suppose then I guess the question would be in in the edit when you were sort of working out the structure of the piece, did you play about with uh, how you know how long things would last or what what to draw your focus to, or was it as as scripted? It just sort of worked uh, uh, as it came out of the edit. No, we definitely spent a lot of time in the editing room. I think it took, um, it was interesting because um, I shot this movie right before I um, went uh, for an Erasmus uh, in Paris. So I only had a very limited time 
uh, in the editing room because before I had to screen the movie um, at the school. Um, but then uh, when I came back after half a year, uh, we went back to the editing room with my editor and we spent, I don't know, maybe twice the amount of time that we spent originally <laughs> editing the movie. And we also had like uh, an extra shooting day oh, nice. uh, for just like some minor scenes that uh, would make uh, things clearer during the terrorist attack. Um, and yeah, so, so actually it took uh, quite a long time to finish this movie. It took like a year in the end. And did that? But, but the good thing was that we had a lot of, uh, you know, we could see um, it from a different perspective after such a long time. Yeah, I was gonna say. So, so yeah, when after you had that initial screening, were you sort of informed by the audience reaction? And is that did that sort of inform your edit, or was it stuff that whilst you were watching it, you were kind of like, actually, I'd prefer it if it, you know, works a bit more like this. Yeah, more. Yeah, more like that. Because I, I actually wasn't even present at the, <laughs> at the screening. I was already in Paris where, when I had the screening. Uh, just two, two jet set, two jet set to attend your own premiere. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the way to be. Um, well, speaking of being jet set, you obviously haven't been able to be jet set for the, for the past uh, few months because of the uh, current pandemic. How's it been for you? What, have you? what have you been working on? Have you been able to... Were you continuing your studies or what was what were your yeah months? yeah i was like the first month of lockdown i just spent it here in the countryside doing pretty much nothing <laughs> <laughs> just helping with the garden and uh going on for long walks with my sister's dog um but then i i came back to prague and we um we worked quite a lot on uh, my final movie which was supposed to be shot in two weeks time from now. But I just like this week, we just um, postponed the shooting because of the situation that got worse again in Prague. Mm. It's pretty bad right now. So we couldn't, mm, yeah, we didn't manage to, uh, to guarantee, um, you know, uh, safe, uh, a safe set for, for the whole crew because it's a movie with a lot of extras and a lot of actors and it takes place um, in a nightclub so um <laughs> not much place for so distancing in yeah. <laughs> um but so so uh, during that the lockdown period of course you found out about your YDA gold win congratulations by the way how yeah. how was that for you what was the how did you feel when you, you <clears> found <throat> Pick that up. Uh, I, was, I was very surprised <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> I, I didn't expect it at all um, and I wasn't notified um, beforehand so <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> I was visiting my parents and then I just saw that uh, there was this uh, ceremony on Vimeo so I just like tried to click through it and <laughs> then I just saw the trailer of our movie so I was very surprised. Oh, well, <laughs> In a good congratulations. Um, I'm sure it's uh, opening a lot of doors for you already. Um, and yeah, and good luck with, the, uh, with the, the postponed shoot. I look forward to seeing uh, the movie when you actually get to put it all together. Thank uh, you. Thanks so much for, for taking the time out to, to join me today. It was a real pleasure talking Thank to you. Thank you for... Okay, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye.